Good morning, everyone. So, we're going to start with a few questions. <clears throat> Are you famous? In your own mind. <laughs> Does anyone think you're famous? Not too long ago, my kids told me they thought I was famous. <clears throat> because, well, everybody at church knows me, and everywhere we go is my world, not theirs, at least historically it was, right? And so they always thought, yeah, Dad, you, you, you're kind of famous. And so we had definitions on what famous really is, and what does it mean to be famous? But this morning, I'm gonna break some of those definitions. <clears throat> Who wants to be famous, anybody? Anybody want to be famous? Yep, one, two, my kids. <laughs> and here's the funny thing about that. An overwhelming majority of small children, young children, especially those between the ages of 10 and 12, it is one of their biggest goals to be famous. Forget <clears throat> being educated, being a part of community, uh, growing up and having family and all that kind of stuff. Like, the overwhelming goal of many of them is to be famous. And why? Why do you think that is? Could it possibly be that they've watched so many people on YouTube? Could it be that they've seen others who go from nothing to everything, it would appear, and they think, that would be great. And the idea here being is that some people are really wanting to be known they, they want their 15 minutes of fame. They want stardom. They, they want people in the world to go, I heard their name. I know them. I could recognize them. Anybody want that, really? Does anybody want others to know who you are? It doesn't have to be on a worldwide level. It doesn't even have to be across the United States. It could just be that you're known among the people around you, that they don't forget you. But they pay attention to you. <clears throat> but not just children desire this. Uh, those roughly in the categories of 25 to 40 years old, 50% of them believe that life, their life should be made into a movie. 50% <laughs> of people believe their life should be made into a movie who are between the ages of 25 and 40. <clears throat> Here's worse numbers. Are you ready? One in 12 would disown their family to become a household name. That's kind of backwards in a way, isn't it? <clears throat> but then again, you have to think about where they're coming from. Maybe their family isn't so desirable. <laughs> One in nine would give up marriage altogether. But you also have to think about where that is culturally. Today, is that a big deal today? Not so much. One in six would give up having kids, and the percent goes up based on the day. <laughs> to be famous, to be a household name, recognized. So this morning, we're starting a new series called Chasing Carrots, the endless pursuit of more. <clears throat> the idea that there's always more, and I want it. And some of these, you might think, that's not me. I don't want that. Think about your grandkids, your great-grandkids. Think about your children. Think about the children you will have if it's not you. Think about the people around you. Think about the 50% of the 25 to 40 year olds who, <clears throat> this is a life goal. This is like, they're all in for. They want this. Now I know there's the other part. There's some percentage that says, I want no one to know me. <laughs> I would like to be like uh, invisible and walk through life with no one regarding me at all. But even those people, I would wager, want to be known by someone, or some two, or three. <laughs> There's still a desire to have connection, <clears throat> to be with others who, who love you, respect you, desire you. So, <clears throat> this morning, we're talking about the idea of being famous and the desire for fame. The never-ending desire of fame that can never be satisfied as long as you live. <clears throat> that there's always this desire for people to know us. So, 
we have an emphasis on prayer <clears throat> this year, and so I want us to pray about those who are famous and those who desire fame, and even ourselves, and our desire to be known. Let's pray. God, I ask that you would move in our hearts, that we would be satisfied to know you and to be known by you, but also that we would desire to make you famous. God, I, I pray for those who long to be known by others, to be famous in this world, to be <clears throat> someone that the world looks to and says, what, what are they thinking? What are they doing? And God, I pray for us who, who want to be thought of by others, who, who want others to think kindly and respectfully of us and also desire to have others ask us, how are you today? What are you thinking about? What's your world about? But God, I also pray for those who are currently famous and who are <clears throat> laboring under a weight that is immense. And their personalities and their lives are breaking apart as a result. God, we ask that you would help us all to, to learn what it means to be satisfied in you. It's in Jesus we pray. Amen. So, next question. Is it wrong to be famous? Is it a bad thing that others would know who you are? Well, I would say no. Nothing wrong with being famous. The difficulty is <clears throat> it's going to happen to some people. <laughs> and it may not be you. <laughs> or it might be you and you didn't want it. <clears throat> the idea is this. <clears throat> if you work diligently, if you're a hard worker, or if you're fortunate or unfortunate, in the sense that you do something better than others, you'll be recognized for it eventually, right? I mean, think about it. Everybody knows the best, not everybody, but many people, and generically, when we say everybody today, we're, I'm not going to qualify it every time, but <laughs> there is this idea that everybody knows you. Actually, the most famous people in the world are not known by literally everyone. But we always say, oh, everybody knows that. No, you do. I do. But there's other people around the world who have no clue because they don't own a television. Uh, they don't have anything electronic. Uh, they live out in the middle of nowhere. Or it's as if they do. They bury their head under a rock and pay attention to no one. There are also people who can't remember others' faces. In fact, there's a popular comedian who goes on talk shows telling people, I sat with somebody and I don't know who they were, and then you have to guess who they are. It's a fun game. But <clears throat> people don't always recognize others. So when we say everybody, it's generically. Many people know this person, right? So <clears throat> we could say, if you work hard, if somehow you're discovered, if something happens to you, suddenly you could be locally famous, you could be famous at your workplace, you might say, but we all know that's not real fame, and yet it's great, isn't it? When people recognize you for doing a good job and working well, isn't that fabulous? Isn't that what you work for in some sense? I mean, not like it's the epitome of everything. You, you have to have the boss tell you, good job today, and if you didn't hear it today, your life is miserable, right? No. But most people don't live that way, and yet there's always a desire to hear, well done, good job, right? <clears throat> so King David is one of those people too, because he was a person. At least we believe so, right? First Chronicles 14, 16 through 7 say this, So David did as God commanded him, and they struck down the Philistine army all the way from Gibeon to Gezer. <clears throat> so David's fame spread throughout every land, and the Lord made all the nations fear him. So God, in some sense, made David famous. So we know fame isn't a bad thing necessarily, but also when you realize that David became famous, Saul didn't like him very much after that. Is that right? <laughs> the king, <clears throat> the current reigning king, <clears throat> did not want anyone to compete with them. So as soon as you become famous or well-known because you do well, it could get sideways for you because somebody is competing with you whether you're competing with them or not, right? You may not have known it in high school, but you are going to be the valedictorian. Somebody else heard about that, and they said, no, you aren't. I'm going to work harder. I'm going to take more classes than you. And then you realize, hold on, what's this about? Oh, you mean I could win this? And suddenly you're in the race, right? Now, that only happens to a small percentage of people. 
I was not one of them. I was not in that race. <laughs> but <clears throat> also Solomon asked for wisdom. He got riches and fame too. The whole world knows Solomon, generically speaking, right? <clears throat> Nobody is wiser than Solomon. He had a fabulous life. Well, except for then he didn't. <clears throat> and this is what we see happen. When people get wealth and fame and notoriety, they get too big for their britches, even if they're the king of the world in some sense, and they expect everyone to just let them do whatever they want. And there has to be some holding accountable of those individuals in some way, right? But when you're the king, it's kind of hard. <clears throat> so what about Jesus? Everywhere he went, he had crowds following him. He fed 5,000 and 4,000 on another occasion, right? And those were only the men. They didn't count the women and children. Had they counted them, it would have been a lot more. And then, you know, he was kind of crucified, and the world made a big deal about that, especially when he rose from the dead. I would say he's famous. He's one of the most famous people in the whole world. Time changed as a result of who Jesus was and what he did and, and, and his life, right? And not just that, but the whole world changed. Because Jesus established a new way to be human, a new way to think, a new way to behave. So fame can be fabulous. But how does one become famous today? <laughs> What's the craziest story just at the top of your head about somebody becoming famous? Tell your neighbor. What do you remember? Anybody? Anybody? craziest story of somebody becoming famous. There's like minimal murmuring here, people. You don't pay attention to these things, do you? Okay, so do you remember a little boy named Alex? Well, not that little. He's not exactly a boy. He was a teenager. He worked at Target. You don't remember this? It was a few years back. He woke up going to work, thought nothing of it. Somebody took his picture, shared it on Instagram or somewhere, and he woke up with like 144 Twitter followers or whatever it was, and he ended the day with 300,000. The next day he was on CNN. That's a little disruptive, isn't it? <laughs> That's a little weird, isn't it? Because he was cute. <laughs> and you know, he is not on social media today because that burst of fame destroyed his world. It wrecked him, at least in that social media sort of a way. And it's happened to many other people's, right? Many, many other people had similar situations. But here's how people become famous. Um, you can uh, do trick shots. Anybody see those videos? Right? Trick shots galore. Uh, and, and you just keep making more of them and making them more outrageous. And then you gather a team of people. Then you can do stunts, right? You can do things that hurt you or others and <laughs> become famous for it. You, you can uh, give away money and become famous. In fact, one of the most ce celebrated people on the Internet is this guy called Mr. Beast. It's not his real name, of course, but that's what he goes by. And his stunts are basically where he gives his friends millions of dollars, thousands of dollars, and random strangers too. And he videos it, makes a competition out of it, and everybody goes, wow! But really and truly, he gives away a ton of money. I mean, he walks into a random store with random people, and he tells them, here's a credit card. Now, if you go over the limit, you lose it all. <laughs> but what he doesn't tell them is there is no limit. So they're always betting on, well, how much can we spend? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. They get to the end, and they're beating themselves up because he says, you know, there was no limit. They're like, Oh, my goodness. And so suddenly they got $20,000 worth of stuff, and they're like, we could have had more. And it feels like silver instead of gold. You know what I'm talking about? If you win gold, you're like top of the world for a day or two or three, and then you're like, I've got to defend it next year. I've got to do better. But if you're silver, you're like, I missed it by this much. My world is ruined. I hate life. But if you're third, do you know what happens there? Typically you go, man, that was great. I made it to the podium. I did well. And psychologically, we all think, how, how could I have done better? Even at third, second, or, or first, 
many times we think, oh, it was a fluke. I didn't deserve it. And yet, maybe you're there because God wants you there. So how do people become famous today? There's a ton of different ways. And people dreaming up new ways constantly. In fact, some people pressure wash and videotape the pressure washings of other people's driveways, and they become famous for that. You're like, what? Yeah. And other people sit and watch them pressure washing a driveway for hours. And you're like, no, millions of views for pressure washing. Okay. Some other guy, Rando, he goes out and he cuts people's lawns that haven't been cut and he does it like in stealth. He doesn't knock on their door. He tries to just go through and clean up their yard. And I mean, it could be awful. And he makes money because he cuts people's yards. No, because he videotapes himself cutting people's yards and then people watch it and he has millions of views and he gets paid by YouTube. Isn't that crazy? And then you can do affiliate marketing where then you make even more money. And some of you are going, this is nuts. Why is this in a sermon? Because this is the world you live in today. This is the world your children live in today. Your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, and the ones after them. Everybody, again, not everybody, but everybody wants to be famous. And everybody wants to monetize their life. Oh, look, if I would just videotape myself in an argument with my wife, I could make a ton of money. Because I could post it to YouTube and people would pick sides and they'd argue. <laughs> who's right? Who's wrong? Or I could prank my wife. Other people do that. They throw cheese at their wife's face. And they become famous for throwing cheese at their wife's face. Of course they're doing it this way. The wife is there and they're here and they throw it and it lands on her forehead and they videotaped it. <clears throat> and they get millions and millions of views and tons of money. And you're like, this is dumb. I agree. Moving on. How do people used to become famous though? People used to become famous because they had high academic achievements. They were celebrated scientists in the world. They discovered something. They made something. They did something. <clears throat> they were a, a renowned politician. They did well. They did something meaningful as opposed to throwing cheese on their wife's face, right? <laughs> so <clears throat> when you think about all of that, it's just a little strange, the world we live in today. Who would have thought it would ever come to this? And cat videos, don't forget about those. There's an antidote though. <clears throat> John 3.30, John the Baptist in the antidote. <clears throat> he must become greater and greater and I must become less and less. John the Baptist was born for one purpose, to announce Jesus to the world, to prepare a path for him, to say, hey, I've got somebody coming after me that's really important, and I want to tell you about them. Now, some people, <clears throat> they do this with their, their platform. I don't know if you know this, but when you're famous on social media, you have a, pla a platform. It means people listen to you. And this is how you get money from people saying, can you just use this product in your video? And then you get that product and tons of money. It's a crazy thing, but it happens. <clears throat> and some people say, I use my platform for Jesus because I create good content, I do nice things, or they're just jokes, just silly, and so, you know, it's a positive thing. And then there's actually people that all they do is post Jesus videos. Like, they, they, they preach, they teach, they're, but they're not as famous because that's not as desirable to most people. But there are also those who are good, kind, decent, nice people who do all the crazy stuff that everybody else does, but they do it in a way that's a little better, right? And the question is, can you desire fame and present Jesus to the world at the same time? Can you desire to be known and also want to make Jesus known? And that's something I don't, I don't know. There's a struggle with that in some sense because fame changes the focus of your life. When you say, I want to be known, what you're really saying is, I want everybody to pay attention to me. And I want the world to know me and to be about me. And I want, when I walk into a place, I want people to say, oh, we reserved a table for you, right? Oh, here's the best place. And didn't Jesus warn something about that? Now, at the same time, you might be a person who's creative and enjoys that, and you might be known because you do great work. Fabulous. You might also consider your work the creative content 
then fabulous. There's nothing wrong with being famous. We already talked about that. But it's the desire for everyone to know you and pay attention to you. It just moves the needle far enough away from Jesus that it might be problematic. <laughs> and you might need to reconsider how and why you present yourself the way you do. Because at some point, it gets dangerous, right? And so the whole goal is to be a little like the crazy prophet, John the Baptist, who wore animal skins, locusts and honey is what his food was, right? But he prepared people for Jesus. But that's what he was called to do by God. So the question is, did God call you to do what you're doing? And you might say, but I'm not wanting to be YouTube famous. This sermon doesn't apply to me. But again, let's come back to, do you want your family to love you, respect you, know you? Do you want to be known among your neighbors as a person of this kind or that kind? I mean, do you want people to go, oh, look, there they are. They've come in the room. We, we have a seat for you. In some sense, don't we all want that? And granted, some of us, we know that our capacity for that is limited, and we're not going to overshoot that, oversell that, and go too far, because we know, like, I'm not somebody special. But here's the other side. <clears throat> there are grandmothers who are famous on TikTok and YouTube and everywhere because they interact with their kids and do their silly dances and have fun with them. <laughs> so it's possible for you, too, to be a YouTube star. <laughs> but moving on. Philippians 3, 8. From our reading. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage or dung, so that I could gain Christ. And this is really the wholeness of our lives. When we look at Paul and we say, who was Paul? What was Paul? Paul was famous. He was the up-and-coming rabbi. He was going to lead the Sanhedrin. He was going to be somebody. Well, and he still was and still is. I mean, we're talking about him today, aren't we? <laughs> He's an amazing guy who wrote, like, most of the New Testament, or ma massive portion of it, right? More than anybody else. And he went around his known world telling people about Jesus. And everywhere he went, he was famous, but not always in the good way. They wanted to stone him. They wanted to kill him. <laughs> they wanted to drag him off a cliff and throw him over, right? I mean, they did not like the guy very much. And yet he persisted. Why? Because knowing Jesus and sharing Jesus was bigger to him than anything else. And everything he did was in service to that. And I would think, <clears throat> that might be a challenge for us, wouldn't it? No matter what our life is about, is it really first and foremost about Jesus? Is that who we are? Do we present ourselves in that way? And really, it's about being faithful, not famous. It's about giving our lives to Jesus, not making my life more and more and more about me. So if we live from the approval of God, we, we don't necessarily need as much of the approval of the people around us, especially not at the expense of our family, our friends, and our own sense of self-worth. But then the other side of this is true as well. Many people who seek fame, who want to be known, they're doing that out of a place of hurt and woundedness in some sense because they haven't been recognized. They've been overlooked. Their family didn't pay attention to them. There was something about their childhood that just wasn't. On the other side, maybe it's that they've always done well and they've always excelled and the, everything they touch is just good and golden and they can't help but being famous because they're going to do well no matter what market they enter. At the same, we aren't striving to become celebrities, right? As Christians, we are striving to become servants. So even when we might do extremely well and become extremely famous, we're not going to use that fame for ourselves. We're going to find ways to bless others, to serve others, to help others, to make others greater, right? That's my hope. <clears throat> so we're at the end of the message nearly, halfway-ish maybe. Uh, a faith challenge comes up. And the faith challenges are this. Uh, we're not there yet exactly, but I want you to think about the idea again of yourself. Do you want to be known by the people around you? Do you want to be respected, honored, loved, cherished, treated well? 
Do you want people to remember your name when you walk into a place? Especially here even. Or in your, you know, when you have a reunion of any sort. Do you think, I'm going home to my reunion, the high school reunion, college reunion, and do you think, oh, everybody will remember me? Or do you think, nobody will remember me, why would I even go? Both of those are kind of the same side of the coin. I want to be remembered. If nobody remembers me, why would I bother? But if everybody knows me, of course I should go, right? And, and that's the struggle, that we're all desiring that constant affirmation that we've done well, that we're good, that we're enough, that we are, I don't know, loved, liked, appreciated in some way. And at the same, we all fear rejection. Nobody wants to put themselves too far out there to be kind of like slapped in the face, whether that's literally or metaphorically, and told, uh, you're not that important, <laughs> go away. <laughs> I don't want to talk to you, not interested, no thanks, right? So, <clears throat> faith challenges are these. Who are you repping? And that's the fancy way of saying representing. <laughs> that's the current lingo. Who is it that you represent? Are you representing the brand of yourself? Are you representing your family? Who is it that you represent to the world today? I would like you to consider that uh, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. An ambassador is the highest level of statesman who goes to another place to tell them, another country to tell them about the homeland. And you and I are called to be ambassadors for Jesus, given the highest honor to go and represent the kingdom of God to others. And in that sense, we should be making the kingdom of God famous. We should be doing all we can to help others see that God is the greatest. First Thessalonians says it this way, For we speak as messengers approved by God to be entrusted with the good news. Our purpose is to please God, not people. He alone examines the motives of our hearts. As for human praise, we have never sought it from you or anyone else. And of course, that was Paul. But you know, the other side of that is, we all, even Paul, I think, to some degree, wanted people to like him. <laughs> but that desire drops to nothing almost in comparison to the calling of Christ. When God calls you, that, that movement is to move closer to Jesus and not to worry so much about others' approval. And yet, we all desire to make others happy, to help them, to encourage them. And you might say, Psalm 115 says this, not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory because of your love and faithfulness. So it's not about me, God. I want you to be famous. I want you to do well, God. I want your name to go big. And have you heard about Jim Carrey? He had this statement not too long ago, and he basically dropped out of movies, and he's only done one or two here and there since he made this kind of statement. He said, I think everybody should get rich and famous and do everything they ever dreamed so they can see that it's not the answer. <laughs> like, it doesn't solve your world's problems. It creates many, many, many more. So, number two, whose approval matters most? And of course the answer is, God's, well done. <laughs> It's the, it's the church answer. God's, Jesus, it's always the answer. Whose approval matters most? <clears throat> Jesus, does Jesus approve is the question? Well done, good and faithful servant. That, that's the whole goal of a Christian's life is to hear Jesus say to you, well done, good and faithful servant. Well done, well done. And if you hear that, it won't be the same as well done, good and faithful social media personality, right? <laughs> but maybe in some sense that, if you do that and do it well, if you do it well, honoring Jesus the whole time, is it possible? Maybe. But I don't think his first words will be, well done, good and faithful social media superstar, right? I think it would be, well done, good and faithful servant. The one who's used whatever platform you have to shine a light on Jesus and the kingdom of God. And that's the overriding question of the day. Does Jesus approve of how we behave? Does Jesus approve of our hearts? And it doesn't mean like, nah, you're bad. It means no. 
Does Jesus look at you and say, my child, I love you. My brother, my sister, my dear, I love you. And do you respond to him in kind? I love you too, Jesus. How can I love you more? That's the overwhelming struggle. So again, we're not called to be famous. We're called to be faithful. And we need to move closer and closer to God in all of this. So one way to do that is to remember Micah 6.8 as we pray for humility. So I've adopted that and changed it, morphed it a little bit. You'll find it familiar, but let's pray this together. God, you have shown us what is good. While we are still mortals, we know what you require of us, to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with you, our God. God, as we continue to pray to you, we ask that you would open our hearts to you again and again, that you would help us to see how to be just, how to be righteous, how to live in a way that brings justice to others, that brings mercy to ourselves and to others, and also how to walk humbly with you, God, that we might live in a way that we're seeking your approval more than others. And even still, we, we know that none of us here are big time famous celebrities in any way. But God, we do desire to be well-known and well-loved and even liked. God, help us to use that in the way that is healthy and good, that we live desiring your blessing, that we might bless others. That however we are blessed, that we use that to make you famous, God, and that we use that blessing to help others achieve what they need to achieve as well, what you have called us to and what you've called them to. God, let us walk humbly with you all of our lives, that we might spend eternity with you as well. It's in Jesus we pray. Amen.